Okay, well, I'm back. Let's take a look at some uh, problems from the homework. Um, okay, let's see. This would be page four. Starts on page 452. This is actually page 454 in your book. Let's take a look at number nine. I've got the book here. I'm going to place it off to the side here, but I've I've copied some of the major parts. All right, this, this says that A, B, C, D is a rhombus. All right, so that means, what do we know about a rhombus? Well, all four sides are congruent. We know that opposite sides are congruent because that's a parallelogram. But if all four sides are congruent, then doesn't that mean that 4x plus 15 and 7x plus 2 are the same because they're the they're sides of a rhombus? Yes, it does, actually. And so we can then create an equation with that knowledge. 4x plus 15 is equal to 7x plus 2. Now we'll go back to algebra. Let's solve this. We're going to subtract 4x. Now I have 3x plus 2 is equal to 15. Oh, this isn't going to be equal. Oh, well. We'll subtract 2. We got 13 is equal to 3x. And we divide by 3. And we have 13 over 3. Yuck. Which is 4 and 1 third. So what's the length of AB? Well, we know that x is 4 and 1 third. So we got to put that in for x. I think I got room over here. I can do that. Doesn't matter which one I put it into. Let's put it into this one over here. Four times, we'll make that an improper fraction, 13 over 3 plus 15. All right, so four times that, what is that? 52 thirds. Oops. 52, four times 13. Plus 15, need a common denominator. I know you guys are grossing out right now. 15, 52 over 3 multiplied by 3, that's 45 over 3, which is 97 over 3. Okay, well, not quite 33. 33 would be 99. And so let's see, let's simplify that. We're going to end up with 33, 32. And one third. That's the final answer. Yuck. I know. Fractions. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go to ABC now. All right. So now we know that the diagonals, ABC, where is that? Okay. That's this entire angle right there. Okay. All right. Well, we know that this is Y. Well, we know that the consecutive angles are supplementary. I think I talked to you about that already. Uh, we need to solve for y, but we know that these intersect at 90 degrees. So I know that 12y equals 90 degrees. So if I divide by 12, I have y then is equal to 7.5. Boy, they sure aren't making it easy on us and giving us even numbers, are they? Okay. Well, I know that that's seven and a half. I put that in for four y minus one. So four times 7.5 minus one. What is that, 20? That is 30 minus one. I get 29. Okay. So four y, that makes this one 29. So if that angle is 29, that makes this angle 29 because it bisects the angles. So that makes this entire angle right here 58 degrees. Everyone see how I got that? And since they are, these are parallel, these would be supplementary, 180 minus 58. What is that, 122? It. That's equal to the measure of angle A, B, C. So this entire angle right here is 122 degrees.
Okay. All right, let's go through 13. A lot of questions there. It says, select a word that describes when each of the following statements are true. Okay, we can do that. Select the correct answer for each letter part. A rectangle is a parallelogram. That is always true. A rectangle is always a parallelogram. All right, B, a parallelogram is a rhombus. That is sometimes. A parallelogram could be a square. That's not a rhombus. So that's a, a case when it's not a rhombus. But could it be a rhombus? Sure. A square is a rhombus. That is always true. A square is a rhombus. If you think about it, all the properties of a rhombus, diagonals are perpendicular, diagonals bisect, uh, opposite angles, all those things are true about a square. Okay, what about D? A rhombus is a square, sometimes. If it's if the angles happen to be 90 degrees, four sides are congruent, then that's a rhombus, so it's sometimes a square as well. And a rhombus is a rectangle, again, sometimes. Again, when it's a square, it's a rectangle. Okay, so that does that for 13. Let's go to 15. Explain the error. Here's what I've written out. It, you can't use a this the theorem that assumes the quad is a parallelogram in order to prove it what you would have to use is that the idea that it's a rhombus that opposite sides are congruent that's what you would have to use so that's the it's kind of tricky i think on 15 but you can't use it that the quad is a parallelogram you'd have to use that opposite sides are congruent to say that it's a rhombus which then you could say Let's do one more, 16. All right, here's the, the picture. It says draw a rectangle to represent a soccer goal. So this is our soccer goal. I got a better picture of it in the book. But. Um, label rectangle A, B, C, D show that the distance between the goalposts, B, C, is three times the distance from the top of the goalpost to the ground. So from here across the goalpost, is three times larger than from here to here, three x to x. If the perimeter, perimeter is all four sides added together, of ABCD is 64 feet. Okay, so we would have x plus three x plus x plus three x, and that's gotta equal 64 feet. There's my equation. I'm adding all the way around, because it's the perimeter. Okay. Now, they're, they're including the part of the ground, too. They're not just saying the goal posts, but the entire goal area. Okay, so if we add those together, that's 8x. Okay, well, there we have an even number, x equal to 8. I don't think that answers it. What is the length of BC? So that's across here, if x is equal to 8. 3 times 8 would be 24 feet. Okay. Hopefully that's a good, good start for you for the homework. Helps clarify some things. And if you have any questions, please see me. Ask me questions. Email us. All right, everybody. Take care. We'll get this one posted.